Welcome everybody to FYC Film Review. I am your host Ghani and with me as always, the Null Dog. How are you, buddy? I am exceptional. I am exceptional. I'm doing great yes. because of the movie that we're going to be doing. Absolutely. Uh, if you can't tell, that's the Civil War in our backgrounds and uh, we're here talking about glory. Glory. Give me some stats. When did this movie oh. come out? All right, 1989. It is an 80s movie. Tell an 80s movie. It is a 1989 glory about the Civil War mm. starring Matthew Broderick, Carrie Elwes. Uh, Elwes, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Morgan Freeman, Denzel Washington, and... Andre Brower. Yeah, Andrew Brown. yeah. Yes. Um, uh, uh, so happy we're doing this movie. Um, yes. It, it is... Uh, I'd have to revise my list. It's been a while, but this has always been in one of my top movies of all time. It's the movie yeah. that I can put back on over and over again. And um, I just love it, man. It doesn't, obviously it's a period piece. It doesn't feel like an eighties movie. So, you know, that helps, yeah. um, but just fantastic performances um, directed by Edwards Wick, who was super young when he made this movie. He's like 26. I can't imagine having that level of responsibility of a, of a film like this with stars like that. At yeah. that young of an age, um, you know, he's gone on to do The Last Samurai and Blood Diamond, um, did Legends of the Fall, really, really epic, sweeping, you know, movie director. Um, yeah. And this is just still, for me, my, my favorite of his. Absolutely. Completely agree. I uh, want to call out the composer, James Horner. We've talked about James Horner before in yes. Titanic. But to me, this is James Horner's best. I mean, you, mm. this is just an amazing soundtrack it, it like haunts my soul mm. it's so good and you see the blueprint of what the brave how braveheart soundtrack is mm. because there's so many elements that sound like it um like titanic as well but to me sure. james horner this is his best best stuff right now for me best stuff ever i can't disagree with that i love yeah. how he blends the um cor chorus line with his score um yeah. just just blending it into really like hammer home that intensity of that of each scene that he does it's uh yeah yeah I, I mean i pretty much just said ladies and gentlemen you know mr james horner to myself like the minute the score starts <laughs> yeah. because you're just like yes i forgot yes. i'm so yeah. like that's another part of this what makes this movie so grand yeah james horner rest yes. in peace james horner uh, you are a legend and will always be a legend forever would you say this is the best war movie or your favorite war movie i would say best war movie I would say it's top three, definitely mm -hmm. top three, yeah. maybe even top two. This is an amazing film. Yes. Amazing film. Uh, question for you. Do you remember seeing this as a kid? Fairly young. I don't know if it was because of school. I felt like yeah. we watched this almost every year in school, probably from, you know, fifth grade, sixth grade on, sixth grade on, you know, right. and it just, um, I don't recall seeing, obviously I didn't see it in theaters. It was, I was way too young for, to go see that, but, uh, <laughs> okay. I, I was fairly young. I, I want to say no older than like 12. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 11? Um, I, I, I actually remember seeing this, I think it was junior high or right at mm. freshman year in high school. And it was one of those movies that were in school where I wanted to keep watching it. And as you know, you cannot watch a two and a half hour movie, two hour movie at, at school. So they broke it out into like four or five parts. Sure. And I could not wait. I could not wait to get to history class just to start our history lesson. This movie left such a huge impression for me, man. Such a huge impression for me. And I cannot wait to, to get into it. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I feel like it's tragically underrated, or at least it was. Um, I went back and looked at all the Oscars because I recall Denzel winning for you know best supporting actor. But fun fact, there you go. That's oh, a fun fact. That That's is a fun, a fun fact. fact. Fun um, fact. Denzel won supporting act. Best supporting. There you actor go. Actors. Thank you. Thank you. I, I wasn't sure I'd have a fun fact here because this yeah. movie makes me sad. I love it, but it makes <laughs> me sad. Yeah. Um, but it didn't get nominated for director, for picture, for screenplay, for I mean. James Horner didn't James Horner actually won an Oscar this year for a different movie, but this didn't get nominated. The score yeah. didn't get nominated. I'm That's like crazy. That's what? insane. I just, just completely hosed. I mean, driving Miss Daisy, seriously, love you, Morgan Freeman, but you're better in glory than you are driving Miss Daisy. I don't know. <laughs> just my take on it. Hot take. Okay. All right. Um, I mean, he was like the main character in driving Miss Daisy though, right? Sure. Sure. Yeah, I just think he, I just think they robbed this movie of of so many Oscar noms. At least, I mean, God, sure. to, to yeah. not even recognize it to be nominated, I I was shocked. I was blown away. Yeah, I, I was reading a couple articles um, with historians just reviewing this movie, and they said that this movie is one of the closest depiction of civil war ever. I mean, no movie was ever going to be perfect. 
Um, but they said that this movie is just so pure and so true to to the action, to actually the events that happen that they consider it one of the truest movies to uh, to the Civil War. Ever. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it it's it, there's attention to detail. I mean, there there's no detail you know left unturned. I I searched the battles you know that they show in this movie, and you know, yeah, it seems pretty damn accurate to what. So what truly happened, I think short of the, the flag carrier, um, you know, being a fictional character in the movie versus in, in real life, I don't think those were dead on, you know, the, the person who took up the flag and right. you know, kept going forward towards the fort. But other than that, I mean, God, it's just, it's so dead on everything from the pay, you know, not being equal to, you know, the lack of supplies for them. It just, yeah. It, it's, yeah, yeah. It's a great, great uplifting movie. That's so sad. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, Matthew Broderick, Robert Shaw, uh, Matthew Broderick's character. I remember watching it in the very, very early years watching it. I was really, I always got annoyed with this character. Mm. Um, but as I get older, I, I, I tend to appreciate his character a little bit more. Another character that I think is really underrated in this movie is Carrie Elwes, uh, Forbes, mm. whatever his name is. For mm -hmm. I love his character. I love his character. And I read somewhere online that a lot of his uh, dialogue were actually cut out of the film so he's supposed to have more more dialogue but I love his character I think I mean that's Shaw's right hand man sure right with it's almost like without Forbes I don't think Shaw would be the man that he is personally agree I mean yeah there, there's that counterbalance between their methods as they're training the troops yeah. um, and and that line where you have to kind of draw in the sand that you know these we're friends, but we're also, you know, colleagues and you're my subordinate and um, there's, they're good. They're good together. I really like it. Yeah. The the first scene that like really gets me is when they capture Denzel's character, you know, a uh, trip. Yeah. I mean, he, <laughs> yeah. You know, apparently he, you know, was an abandoned deserter um, except he was really just going to look for shoes and that shoes. whipping scene, like still it, just so hard to watch. Um, so you know, it, it they really drive it home. They really make sure that like you feel what's going on, and you know to see it to the point of him getting broken to to a tear. Like it's tough. Like I'm getting shells talking about. It. Like it that still like just carries so much weight to like even though he he's respected enough to you know be enlisted and and you know given a gun and you can fight for his country. You know you're still treated like a slave, and it was right. just you know it's haunting. It's yeah. it's very haunting. That, that is a very hard scene to watch, even when you know it's coming. I've seen it so many times, and mm -hmm. it is a very tough scene to watch. This is Denzel, for me, probably his best for me. For me, Denzel is just, he's so good in it. Yeah. The transformation from this guy who is so bitter and angry to really breaking down and, and having the respect he has for the 54 and even Robert Shaw, just, ugh. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. This is the first movie I remember that them they would kill off main characters. I mean, obviously, like the history itself is, you know, it, it happened. So you can't, yeah. there's not really a way around it. But I just remember, you know, when you're a kid, like Arnold lives through every, you know, action movie and all the yeah. main characters always make it out of a movie, even a horror movie, the the main characters so, like to have such huge named actors, you know, and, and then see them, you know ultimately you know lose this battle it, it, it just the first time i really remember like <gasps> like they're not invincible <laughs> <laughs> no no they're not one of the scenes that I, I also really enjoyed um was the turning point and that was when, when they were getting their pay mm -hmm. all these soldiers were getting their pay and the government decides you because they're not white they're going to get three dollars they're going to be short sure. three dollars which was a huge amount of money back then and trip goes on this you know tear it up tear it up tear it up tear it up and Robert Shaw, you know, he decides to tear up his pay as well, the leader. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was the turning point in the movie where these men actually starting having respect for for him because he's trying to figure it out. I mean, he, he's got a tough job. You know, he's a 23 year old trying to figure out how, how to lead this these men, these, you know, who were all slaves at one point. So it's they, they come. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. I like that scene. Yeah, I, I like the um, interaction between him and Thomas as well. I, I like um, Thomas struggling to, you know, be an, an enlisted man and yeah. with with his buddies, basically, you know, people he grew up with. And, um, you know, th that being such a struggle with not only him, but with how 
Trip, Denzel's character, treats him, you know, for being, you know, a free person. Yeah. And and, oh, yeah, that's right, that's right, yeah. and how much he, you know, hated him for that and and you know, got on ragged on him for being a certain way and not like everyone else. And it, right. um Thomas is a tough character, man. It's he uh is. Yeah. him getting, you know, belittled and and you know shoved around and, and hit by the uh the Irish lieutenant the drill colonel sergeant, yeah. drill sergeant you know. yeah oh that was tough to watch Ooh, it's you know yeah but you really see like you know when uh, he calls him when he calls Matthew Bradder calls him over Shaw calls him over and you know has this deep conversation with like hey you know like why are you so hard on them and you know basically telling them like you, you they need to grow up like and that's you don't realize that's where it made me kind of like look up where how Shaw was and like god right. he's so young to be in charge of something like this especially yeah. when everyone's expecting you to fail you know they're just kind of like well these are just extra bodies that'll help us win this war, but they, they were treated as if it didn't matter. You know, even yeah. though they made comments multiple times about them being better than most, you know, infantry, sure. they, they were better marchers. They were better. They were just all in all better than any other regime that they had trained, and right. yet still lack of respect. Still right. just treated as if they weren't equal from pay down to shoes. Right, and I mean originally from what i got they, they weren't even supposed to fight mm -hmm. in any wars they weren't even supposed to see combat there was just their stuff for manual labor sure. you know so that just goes to show how the government treated them they're you know basically you know they're not fit to fight in war i mean who did how do you determine that you know it's just kind sure. of sick like okay you can determine because they're they're not white they can't fight in the war how does that even i mean that's just sick to think about and to be treated that way so far as to still you know, volunteer to, to be on the yeah. front lines, to, to be the group that leads the, you know, the attack on, on the fort. I, Fort Wagner. you yeah. know, how, how do you not at some point just turn your back on like, this is stupid. Like, fine. Don't have us fight. Like, you know, it just, it, it's something else. It's very, it's a very inspiring movie as hard yeah. as the, the Fort Wagner scene is. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, there was even one point where um, they there was a declaration by the South saying that if there, any of them were caught, they were going to be sent back um, to to slavery, and any white officer would be pretty much put to death or trial or something yep. like that. And they still went with it. They figured, you know, we're here, you know, we're we're free, and in, in a way, we're fr there's freedom here in this. Yeah. So, yeah, that that was one of the first I think real like awe inspiring moments where you know he announces that to the entire company and then they, yeah. they cut to the next morning and gets you know hey how many you know how many are we down to and he gets out and everyone's there still everyone's and it just there, yeah. the move yeah. the music comes the score comes <laughs> sweeping in and yeah. you're just like oh my god like yeah it's it's uh it's still powerful man i, I can't is. i've had to see this at least a dozen times and it, it still gets me and still gives me chills and still holds up i mean a 30 year old movie like it's it's still really good yeah it's, uh, so well done do you have any bad lines for this movie? Okay, so I, I had one. Carrie Elways, when he's fighting with, you know, Matthew Broderick about how they're handling things. Um, and, you know, basically he pulls rank. Shaw pulls rank. It's like, look, I'm in charge. And Shaw, or uh, what's uh, Carrie Elways' character's name? Forbes. Forbes, Forbes basically, yeah. like, pulls the, like, you know, yes massa stuff. Never question my authority front of others i is sorry Lassie. you be the boss man now and all us chillins must learn major to force like i was like <laughs> mm, like i don't know i mean i get it but i it was also just kind of like nah not, <laughs> okay. not for me like <laughs> I, okay. I would have liked a better retort but it wasn't yeah. i mean it's hard to pick apart this movie there's not really necessarily a bad line that was just one of those things where i was like yeah eh, it wouldn't have been my choice but okay yeah, it's funny i i i Again, with my research I've done online, I read that Matthew Broderick and Carrie Ellis do not get along in this movie at all. They really? Do not get along, yeah. That is a fun fact. There was a lot of conflict between those two, um, especially because of all the dialogue that was cut from Carrie Ellis's lines. Yeah, so that's what I read. Um, you know, a lot of different material out there that that are saying that. So. Hmm. Whether it be true or not, I had a bad. I kind of, I did have a bad line actually, okay. <laughs> and it was delivered by Robert Shaw, Matthew Broderick's character, and it was towards the end. It was the day before they were going to go to in, uh, Fort Wagner. They were at Fort Wagner. It was him and with his higher ups, and that's when he said, "Hey, my my team will do it." And he says this line: "The one of the higher ups were asking, are you sure your team wants to do it?'" And this is what he says: "You should have seen us. 
We were a sight to see. You should have seen us in action two days ago. We were a sight to see. I was like, okay. <laughs> All right, Robert Shaw. Uh, talking so, about what the previous time that they were. In so battle? the first the first combat battle that they right. won, which I think was a smaller one. He right. goes, you should have seen us. We were a sight to see. And I thought, ah, that's it right there. Oh, I didn't even want to find one, but I was like, I gotta be true to myself. Okay, so whatever. God, it blows my mind is like watching these films like how was that a a i don't know how was that a plan for like you just line up and get shot at like i, yeah. I just don't understand how that was a military it, plan back in the it's day it's a suicide mission basically yeah. it's a suicide mission knowing that there's going to be casualties because they need to advance it and yeah. they just you know that's one of my favorite scenes in this movie was the night before when all the men were at the camp Mm -hmm. And they were start. They're 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 like having this. They're singing this gospel song, yep. and you see, uh, I forget the other the guy's name, uh, Rollins, Matthew or uh, Morgan Freeman's character, and another character. And they they stand up and they're they're kind of preaching and, and talking about their faith in God. And then they call on Trip, mm -hmm. and Trip goes, I, I'm not really much for prayer, but he delivers a line that just goes the 54 is my family and he goes no matter what happens tomorrow we're men and that's just oh, yeah. and it's just one of those scenes that all those men are just singing and and it's their faith i mean these men were slaves their whole life so all they really had were each other their family and their faith and they knew that a lot of them were kind of you're gonna make it the next day so just a really powerful scene for me yeah yeah no it totally is and then i mean the this the on the beach you know, the next morning as they line up and, you know, they dismiss the the drum line and yeah. start marching towards it. Um, I, I kind of looked up, you know, really just strategic stuff about that battle and, you know, what they, what they faced. And you're right. It was a suicide mission. They had to march up the beach, yeah. basically make a 90 degree turn into where they could try to rush the, the fort. And I mean, they just had <laughs> yeah. cannons and they were just a shooting gallery it was yep. it was insane and yeah again strategically like there had there wasn't a better way to do this to try mm -hmm. to take the i mean uh it just it it's gut-wrenching as you're you're watching them march to it and realizing like the extent of you know how long that battle lasted you know i've got the the beginning of it here and you've got the end of it you know and it, it's <laughs> yeah. like yeah. it's a day of just uh, of a nightmare you know i yeah. just losing your your loved ones and you know your brethren on, on a battlefield i whew, it's tough man it is it is tough i really like robert shaw matthew broder's character right before they charge he looks at the beach just one last time you get james horner's score and he's just seeing the beach and and some seagulls knowing that this is going to be my last time he knows it he mm -hmm. knows it he just yeah. knows it but uh, but he goes with it and they start the march they start proceeding and it's like you say they're just a shoot it's a shooting gallery they got they got no defense whatsoever um and they just go for it and right off the bat you know right when they get onto the like the hill part uh robert shaw is killed i was not expecting that the first time right away totally yeah i i loved that last arc for him you know he gets off his horse He's no longer above everyone. He's like side oh. by side. I'm sure he couldn't, you know, ride the horse up the beach, but he gets off the horse. He walks with his men. Yeah. And in that moment, he realizes this is it. Like you said, you know, in that last moment of, of trying to, you know, rush up the hill, he knows they're stuck. He knows, you know, the yeah. only thing I can do is lead my men and this is what we got to do. And so he is the first to step out of, you know, the cover and, and run up the hill. And then you just hear, you know thomas yelling shaw's name out then you, you you know you see denzel and just everybody trying to like pick each other up and get up the yeah. hill and you're like this is not going well yeah. <laughs> this isn't going to go well and and it yeah. just it's like heartbreak after heartbreak for the it next is. 20 minutes yeah shock gets shot then yeah. uh trip denzel characters get shot right away it's, it's like within 30 seconds of each other they get shot and, and then um uh what's his name thomas picks up the flag yeah and then that's when they start just rushing in um and that this is where i want to talk about carrie elvis because carrie elvis takes takes the lead basically mm -hmm. and he looks like such a badass running 
um, and just taking their men and just kind of running along the side of the fort. Mm -hmm. it, it's just an incredible scene. And then the they're like, it seems like there's fireworks in the background, but it's sure. cannons, you know, yeah. and it's just incredible, incredible scene. And I've seen this scene so many times and there's always some hope inside me that they're going to take it, that they're going to take it. Oh, they're going to take it this time. And, you know, they never take it in real life. They never take it. And they actually, it, it produces a lot of casualties and it's, it was a really awful day, a really awful thing. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had the same feeling too, where they do get into the fort and you're like, oh my God, yeah, <laughs> they're actually going to do this. Yeah. And till they don't. And yeah. And that scene, you know, what you have behind you is the same shock. I think you have as an audience member just going, oh my God, they just walked into a trap basically yeah. you know and it's over and yeah i think you know casualty wise it was it was well over you know a thousand men and you know a huge huge chunk of the 54th and that scene where you know they're cleaning up the beach at the end with the west graves you know, yeah yeah with you know denzel getting laid kind of right next to uh matthew broderick you know and just like uh it's it's it still hurts sure yeah 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 i it's it's uh it's a really really great film memorable and just just an amazing piece of work so i loved it all right man i think it's time to rate it um oh. I'm, I'm gonna say we go with bayonets you know bayonets. Let's, okay. let's fix the bayonets and let's give the audience how many we would fix to our guns as they you know use them okay there. all right rating scale bayonets one to five one bayonet being just a really awful awful movie or five being this glorious wondrous movie that we think it is <laughs> okay i'll let you go first all right um i struggle with this because i want to say it's it's perfect um and and it feels perfect for me and for while it's not the i think the best war movie it's my favorite war movie still hands mm -hmm. down um i think it tells a better story than any other war movie i've seen and uh I'm gonna go four and a half bayonets. I don't know if they make half bayonets. You know, maybe it's not as long and pointy, but I'm gonna go with four and a half. I almost want to give it perfect, but okay. I'll be, I'll, I'll reserve that for for something that I, I don't know. I guess doesn't okay. make me cry. Okay. <laughs> All right. Four and a half bayonets. Yes. Right? yes. Four and a half. And a half. That half. is a that is a really amazing. That's a great score. That is a fantastic score. Fantastic. Okay. I, I, I can't hide my feelings for this movie. I can't. I cannot hide my feelings for this movie. This movie is such an amazing piece of work. The the score, the film, the actors. Denzel Washington is just, just amazing in this. Um, this movie is about a time in our history, about something rather small that had such a huge effect on the Civil War. So to me, this is just an amazing piece of work. It is a five. It is a clean Ooh. sweep for me. Five bandits for me. This is the second movie I have given a five. I'm not yes. going to say what the other one is, so you have to watch the other reviews. <laughs> <laughs> a five. This is a clean sweep for me. This is an wow. amazing movie, and wow. I will just defend this to the day I die. Five bandits for me. Excellent. Excellent pull. Yeah. I love it, man. I, I I can't argue with it. I'm almost mad at myself for not just giving it a five. I, I, you should. I, I'll go edit this and then just make it a five. <laughs> uh, no, I'll stick with my four and a half this time. Okay. This time it's, it, it is what it is. But yeah. uh, I mean, that's it. This movie is, as Ronaldo said, glorious. Uh, four and a half, five bayonets. You can tell right now, like if you haven't watched it, you better watch it. It's historical. It's great acting. It's, uh, it's everything we've just talked about. So check it out let us yeah. know give us your feelings on glory um try not to cry don't cry actually yeah. cry just let it cry. out just it's yeah good. just go watch it. this go watch this movie highly recommend <laughs> it. go watch it now turn us off and go watch it now yeah because we're done this is a uh, fyc film review i've been your host Gagne. with me as always we'll see you next time guys thanks so much see you guys later in. bye bye